calificas para ser legal? ¿Quieres saber? Solo llama al abogado Andrés Mejer. What happens if you already have a deportation order? What options do you have? Quite a number, actually. It really depends on what were the circumstances when you had the order of deportation and what are the circumstances today. So let's say for purpose of conversation, 15 years ago I was caught entering the border. I was released, given a court date. I didn't appear to court and I was given an order of deportation. But today I'm married to a U.S. citizen. Um, I have two U.S. citizen children and my wife can apply for me. Well, that's a new fact, a new circumstance that did not exist 10 or 15 years ago. So I now have an order of deportation 15 years ago. My wife applies for me. I document their relationship. We have two kids, so it's a legitimate relationship. I can prove it. The moment that's approved, then I either file a motion to reopen with the judge that signed the order of removal, wherever that was, Texas, Florida, Arizona, California, New York, New Jersey, wherever that was, I need to file it with that court or with the judge if the judge is still there. If the judge is retired, then I file it with the court and the court will assign a judge to review it. What I'm, what we're saying is there's now I can prove I have a path to change my status. I have a U.S. citizen wife. The relationship has been approved by immigration. Um, and I'm asking for the judge to reopen the matter. Often a judge will reopen, not in every scenario. It's discretionary because motion to reopen has a certain period of time. You can only do it once. So now that's been approved, judge reopens it. The problem that's been happening now is the, is the judge will not remand it down to immigration to adjudicate my relationship and to give me my green card. So I may have to have a trial in front of the judge um, in order to get my green card. And the judge will, will hear testimony whether my relationship is legitimate and whether I am admissible to the U.S. Now, because judges are not closing, uh, uh, are not just remanding cases down to immigration, I might just file the waiver. It's called an I-212 waiver. I'm going to need to show extreme hardship to my wife, who's a U.S. citizen. My children don't count for this directly, but if my wife's a single mom, that might be hard. She would be emotionally, financially, and, and potentially medically affected by the separation. And because of that, the USCIS will grant me a waiver to overcome the order of deportation. So now I have proved my relationship is legitimate. I have a waiver that was adjudicated by immigration, but I've been in the US 15 years without permission. I need another waiver. It's called the I-601A. It's the same standard, extreme hardship to my wife. So if I got it approved once, I can get it approved a second time. I know it's ridiculous, uh, but unfortunately, not eligible for a 601A waiver. Uh, it's called the unlawful presence waiver, the provisional law presence waiver, if I'm, if I'm inadmissible for any other reason. If I have an order of deportation, I have to overcome that order, and I then have to apply for the second waiver. It would be nice if you could apply for both at the same time, but you can't, because they'll approve one and deny the other. So that just means it takes more time, more filing fees, but document the relationship, prove the relationship. Get the first waiver to overcome the deportation. Get a second waiver to overcome the time that I've been here. Then I have to get a, an interview date at the U.S. consulate in my home country. For me, it's Chile, Santiago, Chile. I go. The moment my waiver is approved, I know I'm coming back. So I go. I have a medical test. I have, they check my background. They give me an interview. They stamp my passport. I'm in the U.S. as a green card holder, even though I had an order of deportation. Now, let's say... I, that I, I have two U.S. citizen children, I entered without permission. I have same exact scenario. My wife's a U.S. citizen. I entered illegally. I have an order of deportation, but my son's in the military or my daughter's in the military. They're under 21. Okay, give you a different example. Let's say my wife is not here legally, like me. She's not a U.S. citizen. She just wasn't caught at the border. She's not a, a, a lawful permanent resident. My son or daughter is 18 and in the military. They can apply for, for us what's called parole in place. They should not, they're putting their lives at risk for their country. They should not also have to worry 
that their parents would get deported while they're serving their country. So they will give me and my wife parole in place either while my son's in active duty or if he was honorably discharged from the military. In honor of his service, I will get legal entry to the U.S., protection from deportation, and work authorization. When my son or daughter is over 21, obviously a U.S. citizen, they can then apply for me because now I have legal entry. They're considered immediate relative because they're over 21 and a U.S. citizen and my biological child. Well, and my child. That could be adopted, could be steps relationship. doesn't have to be biological. just has to be my child and under the, as defined by the Immigration and Naturalization Act. So, simplified. Parole in place, son or daughter's in the military, I get protection from deportation even if I have a deportation and work authorization. Once my son or daughter is over 21, they can file for me and I can get uh, uh, become a lawful permanent resident of the U.S. If my wife's a U.S. citizen, there's an avenue that she can apply for me. If I was a victim of a violent crime, and there are 23 qualifying federal violent crimes that qualify for a U visa. The idea behind the U visa is, is one, I'm an immigrant, and I was a victim of violent crime. I was afraid, but despite being afraid, I still called the police. I still ass assisted the investigation or, or a trial, and the person was most likely convicted. So with I, I now qualify to apply for a U visa, even if I have an order of removal. U visa includes in it a waiver, which can overcome that I've been here illegally, without permission, that I have an order of removal even certain criminal conduct, but immigration is going to look at it on the totality of the circumstances. If I was a victim of domestic violence, but I murdered someone, I'm not qualifying because what I did is so much worse than what happened to me. So immigration has to look at it at the end of the day, do I deserve it? So let's say I had a DUI and I have an order of deportation, but the DUI was 10 years ago um, and I have not, you know, I've been rehabilitated. It, 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 it never happened again. but. I was placed in removal proceedings and I did have an order of deportation, but I'm still here. Well, U visa can overcome both of those. Now, I can also apply for asylum. I, you know, asylum, an order of deportation does not preclude a filing for asylum. But if I didn't file within a year, that could be hard. I have to show exceptional circumstances, why I didn't file within a year when I entered the country or when circumstances changed. So let's say, for example, I was born in Syria. Well, Syria, for the past four or five years, there was a civil war. There really isn't one today, but it's still not a safe country. But let's say I've been here all this time. You know, I don't really have a good reason why I didn't file in the past year. But let's say Bashar al-Assad steps down or gets murdered. Someone else steps in and now if I go back, now my life's in jeopardy because there's a different political party in power. That's changed circumstances. Even if I have an order of removal, I can file for not asylum per se, it's called withholding of removal, um, but same basic criteria. We've talked about that in the past, so I'm not going to go into those details. What is important is order of removal. I just talked that there's at least five different ways where I can apply and achieve legal status in the U.S. even though I've either already been deported or have an order of deportation. If you want more information about this, you can contact us on Facebook or you can call the office 888 307 and we could talk about it in more detail. Right now I'm talking about in generalities, um, not specific scenarios necessarily. Every case is unique. Even if even two people, both with order of deportation, both with U.S. citizen spouses, one may qualify and one may not. Every case is unique.